Graham Taylor is Vice President and Head of Business Insurance Retail at Travellers Europe. He joins me now. Uh, so Graham, what lines of business does BI Retail cover? So Mark, BI Retail covers five lines of business. Property and cash are core cool lines of business. Uh, and then we also do motor for our public sector, transportation and motor trade sectors. And then for our technology and med tech sectors, we also do PI and cyber. Uh, we then take all those lines of business and we group them into 12 areas where we, where we want to specialise from an industry's perspective. If you look at our tech practice, we've just celebrated 40 years in that space. It shows you as, you know, as a company, when we invest in, a, in an area of expertise that we really want to get deep and meaningful in, we absolutely stay for the long term. All that though is then wrapped around with some added value propositions that we have. So risk control, um, a key part of, of our capability. We want to be seen as trusted advisors in that space. We then have our proactive claim engagements. When a notification happens before a formal notification is uh, provided to us, we want to work very close with our clients to try and mitigate uh, the loss. Uh, we, we provide that via a proactive rehabilitation service in employer's liability. And then third area of our sort of added value really is our claims capability, uh, which is you know, the cornerstone of, of our promise, uh, providing a piece of paper via contract and, and all the other value added things are, are important for us. But for us, if we don't deliver when the client really needs us, then we're not fulfilling our promise. And is this capability multinational? I mean, I know it's Travellers Europe, but I guess a lot of your clients are probably working all around the world. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. So we, we see ourselves as one of the leading multinational insurers. Obviously, having a parent um, the size of, of Travellers US gives us a huge platform into the, in the largest economy in the world. But we have the capability of also writing in 150 other territories. Yeah. Well, this sounds like a pretty extensive proposition. So what sort of resources have you got behind it to back that up? So I would break our resources into two categories. One is the external uh, resources that we, we can provide. Risk control is a core component of our external resource. We have a number of uh, experts. Uh, we, we call them risk consultants as opposed to you know, risk control or risk engineers because what we want to provide there is that the feeling to our clients that what they're getting from us is more than just a person going around with a clipboard, but actually someone who will impart their knowledge, their insight from an insurer that has been around for over 170 years. So there's a lot of knowledge that we have. It's imperative that we can convey that and, and inform our clients on that basis. We then have claim capability. Uh, that, at the end of the day, is, is critical to any insurance company delivering on their proposition. Uh, and, and we have that resource across the UK and Ireland. Uh, we also plug into Travers US and the significant pass capacity they have there. Uh, we also, you know, whilst clients have claims, we want to be there when, when those happen. At the same time, we want to make sure that if we can prevent uh, a claim manifesting itself following an incident, then that's again a capability we want to provide. So we, for example, from an employer's liability standpoint, we give proactive rehab uh, services to our clients. As soon as an instance notified, we work with them actively to try and help their employees get back to work as quickly as possible. So th there's some examples from an external standpoint. Internally, being a specialist insurer, as we, we say we are, and, and we, we deliver on, we need to make sure our underwriters are constantly developing in, in their own career and with their knowledge. Now, you, you need to do that for two reasons. One, risk is dynamic. You know, what was a risk 20 years ago has evolved uh, from then till now. Our underwriters need to make sure that they are you know, constantly keeping their knowledge base to a high level. In addition to that, we want our underwriters to feel that they've got a very clear career pathway. Uh, so what we, we've built is, is a pathway to specialism that allows us to develop our underwriters to the, the relevant level that they need to be, um, and at the same time, ensure that when a sector evolve, not when, it's a question of it will evolve, that our underwriters are at the top of that, uh, that knowledge and able to, to analyse a risk when it comes in. How long have you managed the team? So I've been doing my current role, Mark, for four years. Um, I was given the opportunity during COVID, which at the time uh, was changing, bring a, a new team together. 
and and doing that via you know Teams or Zoom. Uh, we all learnt uh, very quickly that you can actually achieve quite a lot when you when you do things um, yeah. uh, off-site, uh, working from home. It was, I have to say, pleasing you know, after two years to to come together. By which time we we started to execute on the strategy that we've been working on, and and that's something which we've been sort of uh, focusing on ever since. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, what are some of the things you're thinking about adding into the proposition? You talked about about what you've got, but what what's what's to come? Well, we we use a phrase called our dynamic product strategy. What does that actually entail? I've already said that it risks evolve over time, so we need to make sure that our products do the same. And it isn't necessarily a case of coming up with a an eureka moment, a revolutionary new product that's going to fundamentally change the world of insurance. It is making sure that where we have our strength and depth and expertise from a sector standpoint, that we're constantly evolving that. If I look at, for example, some recent things we've done, uh, I mentioned COVID. I mean, in adversity comes opportunity sometimes. And what we noticed post that was there's significant investment in the life science space. We always had capability there, but what we've now done is set up a, a standalone practice. Uh, and practice for us is a, is a department with underwriters who are absolutely deep in their knowledge of a particular sector. So that's what uh, we've done, and we're investing in that this year. That will continue into uh, next year and beyond. At the same time, we're looking at the health and care space. Uh, again, another area that has seen a lot of investment uh, since the COVID years. Uh, Similar to life science, we've always had capability there, but for us, we want to expand on that and invest in that and really build out that that practice. So there are a couple of examples uh, from a a sort of product standpoint, but for us, it's more than just a you know a knowledge base and, and a wording base capability. We also want to look at our proposition. So uh, for claims handling in our motor trade space. What we're looking to do is utilize a capability called Extract, which allows our clients, should they be involved in an accident on the roadside, they can access this app and download information relating to the accident in real time. From a user experience standpoint, it obviously is far more effective. Feedback has been very positive from our clients. And at the same time, for us, we then get information in a real-time basis, which allows us to respond a lot more nimbly when the claim comes in. I was going to say, you mentioned earlier you can pull in all of these resources from the global business, but what are some of those other resources that that you've got globally that you can see yourself getting access to and and using to help build up the proposition? Well, being part of an organisation that's $31 billion and has 33,000 people, I believe, it allows us to access what we call the power of travellers. Uh, what does that actually mean? Well, uh, there's many uh, elements to that. So one from a risk control and claim standpoint, for example, we've got a, a, a laboratory where we're constantly testing on uh, new emerging risks that allows us to evaluate. Well, so if it's a new type of product that is being used in the construction arena, you know, how does that product respond in a fire situation? If we're seeing um, a uh, somewhat contentious liability claim and, and our insured are looking to defend themselves, and obviously we all stand right behind them, we could use that claim laboratory capability to actually investigate what actually happened in that instant that's resulted in the claim. And there's some examples for, for that area. But also, from a distribution standpoint, again, we have large relationships with global brokers. That gives us a platform to access, which we are, will always look to, to leverage off the back of. Uh, and data analytics. I mean, insurance as an industry is awash with data, but it's the utilization of that data, which is the most important thing. And, and we're seeing that as probably the, the most ev- revolutionary element that, you know, not, not just within travelers, but across the industry, the, the use of that data and how that actually informs decisions not only is it happening more regularly, but it's a lot, happening a lot quicker. And again, being part of the, sort of the, the global traveler's brand really gives us a, a lot of power behind that. Graham, you mentioned several times the size of travelers. It's a global brand. So why do you refer to it and think of it as a specialist rather than a general insurer? 
So, Mark, that's a really good question. It's a question I've been asked before. The way I, I would respond to that is, yes, we are in certain sectors where you have to be in that area, you absolutely need to have specialism in underwriting knowledge. I look at technology, life science in particular, you know, transportation. There's some examples of, of, of the areas we're in. But there are also other sectors we're in which are probably more, more general. I mean, we, we write uh, a lot of financial institution, professional uh, property casualty business that a number of markets do. So for us, it's not about being in, a, in a, an area and just providing the same that everyone else can provide. It's actually coming into those sectors and providing something different. Provide that difference via you know, a product, um, through our expertise. It could be via a line of business, from a property, business interruption, employee liability, PI, cyber, et cetera. It could also be from a sector knowledge uh, then there's the platform um, you referenced earlier about our multinational capability. You know, we've got a number of our clients that need an insurer that can deliver in that space, which we can. Uh, but then also there's a service commitment. Uh, we know that you know, our brokers rely on us to ensure that not only can we fulfill from a, a, a wording standpoint and deliver that and impart that knowledge, but also when it comes to delivering a prompt service, that they get that. We make those commitments and we hold ourselves accountable to them. Somebody listening to this or watching this might say, that's all fine, but what travellers think is going to make it really stand out in the current market environment? Where, where's the proof? Yeah, um, good question. And, and the market's becoming more and more aggressive. For me, however, our behaviour shouldn't change. You know, the, the fundamentals that make us who we are has made us successful over time should never really be devalued or, or changed just because the market shifted. I mean, we can't change the weather and we can't change the insurance market. What we have to do though, is make sure that we're delivering on our promises every single day, every single week. And that is a key area that we're, we're focusing on. At, at the end of the day, brokers vote with their feet. So if we're not delivering on our promises, then you can see that in our performance. Uh, we also always seek feedback from our uh, brokers about how we are performing. Uh, and most recently, we've had some, some really glowing feedback around our claim proposition from one of our largest global brokers that put us in the, in the top three. That is evidence that we are delivering on that. So for me, as we enter a much more aggressive marketplace, we need to make sure we're delivering on that and we're delivering on it fast. That is probably going to be the critical thing. So we're absolutely investigating how we can speed up our, our process of response by, as an example, looking at the submission triage process. When an opportunity comes our way, how can we turn it around really quickly so we can give our brokers either a fast note, I mean, brokers don't expect insurers to quote for everything, but they do expect a quick turnaround if it's a negative. And then if it is an opportunity, how can we ensure we inform our underwriters with all the relevant information so they can start doing the underwriting analysis that allows them to give the, uh, the underwriting knowledge and um, hopefully the quote that the broker is looking to get from us. And finally, you've been at Travellers for eight years. What keeps you there? Yeah, I can't believe it's been eight years. For me, fundamentally, it's, it's the brand, it's the people, and also it's the integrity that is you know, omnipresent within the place in many respects. It's what Travers stands by. You know, when we make a promise, we always look to deliver on it. And that, that actually means a lot to me personally. People, you know, when you actually work out how many hours you spend doing the job you do, um, you spend a lot of time with the people you work with, um, more so than you may well spend at home. So working with like-minded individuals who are real colleagues who want to support you and see success collectively is, is a really important point. And then you know, that makes the brand. Um, and when, when I'm, I'm presenting to a client, knowing that I'm actually representing a company like Travers and what it stands for, does really give me significant pride. Graham Taylor, thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs>